Alright, let's see if we can get this thing situated. Let's mount. Alright, let's see if we can get this mount situated. That's good enough, I guess. Good enough. Let's turn this like that. I don't know if this thing will stay. Alright. That stupid thing. Come on. Alright, we're back, I guess, for now. Um, we have an update. Update on this uh, Pro Star. Got this for a, you know a really good deal. Um, this same truck. If you look at uh, International Trucks, um, same year same model it's an es model for fuel efficiency right and they have one up in saginaw michigan in the truck paper that has 139,000 miles on it or 137 or 139 but it's got the bigger sleeper right the uh it's got the 73 instead of the 56 so you know it's just over a foot uh bigger sleeper 17 inches or whatever and uh, they want $107,000 for it. Well, I got this for half that price. But I looked at the axles on the back of this truck. And, you know, when me and Grabber, me and Gary Grabber looked at it, we're like, wait a minute. It's got a, it's got a tag, ax you know, basically a dead axle there, right? Didn't have a pumpkin on it, right? Just a, they call it a six by two, right? Not a six by four. So that's part of their fuel efficiency thing because it, it shaves off a lot of weight and less drag because less components. But I don't know if I'm, I've got to get used to a six by two, right? There's a big difference, a huge difference um, backing these things in with a six by two instead of a six by four configuration. So a big difference one is traction right traction and this configuration there's two ways they do it if they do a six by two the two rear axles either the front ones the dead axle and the very rear one is the is the puller or they do the front one is the puller and then the rear one's just a regular axle sitting there well, that's how this one's configured. Front axle's the puller, the rear axle's nothing, right? So when you're backing this thing up, it, it'll lose traction. Like I'm going uphill, backing up with wet. It's wet, so I don't know what it'll be like in the snow. But, and I got 38,000 pounds on the trailer and it was starting to lose traction, right? So, they got buttons up here to lower the suspension on the different axles. So, I had to lower the load drive axle suspension, put more weight. Um, and it seemed to back in, you know, fairly deep. It didn't slip anymore. It seemed to back in okay. But I gotta, you know, I'm gonna have to get used to, you know, if, if it starts to do that, I gotta hit the button where the other, the six by four configuration, like everybody's used to, um, never had a problem, right? So oh, that's one thing to get used to. Other than that, um, with this load here, so far, this thing didn't get below nine miles a gallon. Um, all day yesterday so what do I got here um, uh, no you shouldn't have done that um,
All right, I had to take care of something. You know, for many years, U.S. Highland had tag axles in snow. They would hit a button to pull the tag axle up. Yeah. So anyway, that's the thing. Uh, I had to take care of an ELD issue right there. Our, our newest uh, member doesn't know the pitfalls of this ELD system. Um, so we got to get them back on track. So that's what we'll do this morning. Anyway, that's what's going on. Um, I haven't looked for another load yet because I don't know when I'll get unloaded here. Uh, well, Thomas, I've been busy, man. I've been really busy. There's so many things that goes on um, to running a trucking company that you just wouldn't believe. You know, yeah, if you got one or two trucks, it, it's not that much work, right? It's not that much work. Um, but when you have, you know, a lot of trucks or, you know, a fairly decent amount of trucks, there's a lot of work to it. A lot of stuff's involved. Um, a lot of problems arise, right? Um, not only that, there's all kinds of other factors that go along with it, uh, that you got to try to, you know, keep up on, make sure you stay legal on and uh, all that stuff. So there's a lot of paperwork, lots and lots of paperwork. And I've streamlined it the best that I can, right? The best that I can. Uh, I'm using all the tools to uh, for that streamlined process. And, uh, you know, and, that, and it's just uh, been busy. Not only that, I had a problem with my um, one tooth back here and uh that took it out of me i i just got now where i can really talk um without you know no pain or nothing so i just didn't feel like doing videos you know so you know we're recovering from that we're uh we're back we're back in this truck trying it out i don't know about winter in this truck with the axle configuration but we'll we'll figure it out um We'll figure it out. But it, you know, it runs good. Uh, still smells brand new. Yeah, you can smell the newness. So it's like it just came out of the, you know, brand new out of the factory floor. But, uh, which is kind of, you know, odd because it's three years old, right? I got my little refrigerator hooked up, Snore Lord. Snorlordio, I got my little refrigerator hooked up down there. That little, uh, the uh, freezer, right? The freezer got that in there. It's just snugged right up underneath there. I did get my printer in here at, for for a 56 inch sleeper. This this really has a lot of. This actually has more room, more storage room than the Volvo 670 I was in. This little 56 inch sleeper has more room for storage. Um, so, I did put a Wabasto heater burger. I did put a Wabasto heater in it. Um, I installed that myself. Uh, I got the, uh, you know, when I called, and this is the funny part, this is where, you know, they try to rip you off. Let me show you something. I'll get some. We'll get something, man. We'll get something. Uh, Let me see where I have it. Where did I see that, folks? I put it away. Oh, yeah, I put it in here, I think. I think I put it in this cubby hole right here. 
right here. So I got online because I made a phone call, right? I made a phone call to uh, Wobasco. And they said, oh, you gotta go through a dealer. So I would call the deal, I called a couple dealers. And they wanted two thousand dollars to install a Wabasto heater. Are you kidding me? So I got online. And heaters for you, they're out of uh, Russia, right? They're out of Russia. They sell Wabasto, Aspar, or a spot bacher, or whatever they want to call themselves. And they have their own called Planner, P L A. I think it's P L A N A R or something like that. But theirs were like uh, the Obasto they were selling. Same one in America, right? Same thing because they all come from Germany. Uh, it was five hundred and eighty dollars or something like that. But yet here they want to sell you to you for 1400 and plus installation and make it two grand so i got on amazon and i looked around on amazon what people had and they had wabasto and, and you know of course they were over a thousand and all that but then they had all of the other heaters this is the heater i went with um they get the autoheater.com that's one of the thing on the back of their book. But I went with this right here, the VVKB. Air heater for diesel, right? It looks just like a Wabasso, it looks just like an Aspar. There's no difference. Um, I hooked it up and I installed it. But see, this is better because this came with everything you needed for installation, even a muffler. It comes with a muffler, so you can't even hear it out the back when it's running. Um, so I installed it. Wasn't that hard, except I had to fabricate. Um, they give you a stand, a, you know, a standpipe, or whatever, to go down in your fuel tank. And on these internationals, I had two plugs. I just took one of the plugs out, and it had threads on this standpipe. When I put it down in there, the threads were too, they were too big. Couldn't find a reducer. Um, so I had to figure something out. So what I did was, I went into the shop and I turned on the grinder and I ground the threads off of it. You know, I just sat there and spun it on the, on the grinding wheel and smoothed it all the way around. And then I went to the hardware store, found me some, uh, like this. Kind of like you do on faucets and stuff, right? Water lines, they had the, the reducers. Well, one of those fit a copper pipe that had threads on it. Because that other end fit my tank. So what I did was I put those two together. And then that copper piece, I slid that standpipe through there. You know, because these had a hole in them, right? So I slid the standpipe through there and that copper... I ground that down so it fit right into that copper fitting and I soldered it and it's and you can't even pull it apart so I stuck that in the tank and uh, works great that's the only thing I had to do I had to fabricate the standpipe a little bit to make it work on this tank so I didn't drill holes in the tank because you could I could have drilled holes in the tank and you know try to reach up in there and stop the shavings from going through and then stick this in there and all that garbage but I didn't have to do that so, so I fabricated it, right? So the VVKB, this was 500, right about 500 bucks, just over 500 bucks. It come with everything, everything um, that you could ever imagine to put it on the truck. Uh, it came with all these parts right here. I don't know if you can see this, but it came with all these parts. It came with all the hoses. This is the hose that comes out of the, the exhaust, out of the bottom. Then it goes through a muffler out the back tailpipe. This is your intake hose. And this hose will connect on the blower unit coming out for hot air. And you would put these right into your sleeper, right? You drill a hole, put that through. Um, 
And of course it came with a nice LED display uh, controller. Easy to wire, right underneath the bunk in this, you know, there's a fuse panel and it even had a thing saying Aspire Heater. So I, I just tapped right into that spot. And uh, it took about seven cycles of starting it up, letting it fault out, it shut off to get it primed. And then once it got primed, no problem. Um, and it's got all types of features on how to run it. Um, I'll just use the auto feature, set it to whatever temperature you want, and it just keeps at that temperature. And what I like about it is the uh, thermometer or whatever, right, is inside the control panel. So when you put it in the sleeper, you're not, you know, like some of those other ones, they have it underneath the bunk. So you really can't set it right. You either roast or you don't roast. And, but this one's into that, so it, it knows what temperature is actually in where you're sleeping. So. Yeah, VVKB. On the back of their book, they give a website. Um, Autoheater.com. That's, I guess that's their website. So, no, this truck is a, it's a, it's a super light truck. It's a six by two configuration. It's, it's what they call their, um, ES package. This truck only weighs 16,000 pounds. When I'm got loaded up with fuel and I hooked to my trailer, I went to the cat scale. I weighed it. Tractor and trailer full of fuel come out to 32,000 32, pounds even. It was like 3220. So 32,000 full of fuel. So this truck with that trailer, you know, if I took 100 gallons off, it could actually haul 49,000 pounds and still be legal. Pretty close. In the back of that, in the back of that wagon. So, you know, it could do 48,000 full of fuel. So it's a super light uh, truck. And I brought up the history. The history of it for the miles I had on it, it would got it was showing 8.9 miles to the gallon with the gallons used. So yeah, this truck here was 16,000. Is the is the lightweight. What's up, Neo? What's going on, man? So yeah, this heater uh He's done a really good job. And let's see what Jeff says here. Um, let me look at the times here. All right. Anthony T says his truck is a 56 running super singles and a tag axle. Is it easy to install with the exception of the stamp pipe? Yes. Um, what it does, this is how you install it. Okay. They give you this, they give you a plate, right? There's a big metal plate. This is the gasket that goes up underneath there. It's a rubber gasket, so nothing, uh, you don't get no uh, fumes in your truck. Uh, you just go up underneath the sleeper, and uh, it sits on a metal plate. It mounts on a metal plate, okay? It's a big square metal plate. And all you do is you take that metal plate. This is how easy it is to install. So you take that metal plate, and you set it down where you want to put it. And it's got the holes. So you buy a one-inch, if, if your floor of your truck is metal, you buy a one-inch uh, metal or bimetal bit right whole bit right whole saw put that on your drill and you set that plate down and you hold it down and you you put your two holes in for your exhaust ports you just drill those and then you put a regular bit on that fits in the holes where the where the bolts will go through and you just drill your four holes and you and you drill two more holes for your little 
the fuel line, things like that, you know, that's on this little plate. So you just drill your holes and then you slap that down on top of it, tighten up the bolts, hook your hoses going into your sleeper, you know, drill your hole where you want your uh, vent. And then it's all plug and play wiring. So route your wiring where you want it to come up into the sleeper for your, for your uh, display. And uh, route the other wire to your fuse panel underneath the sleeper. And you just uh, connect your fuel lines to the uh, thing and that's it. You're done. It's not hard. Um, I took my time at it and installed it in an hour. I could have done it faster, but I was just, you know, taking my time, make sure, you know, I didn't mess nothing up or got it right. So it took me about an hour. So I paid just over 500 bucks for it, an hour of my time. That's better than paying 2000 you know what I'm saying? And this is where I mount, this is where I mounted it. Here, I'll show you. Here, let's, let's turn this around. All right. So we go back in the sleeper. Uh, let me turn the light on here. All right, so we go back in here. What I did is I mounted it right here. This is it right here. That's the bunk heater right there. So I, I took and drilled two holes in here and I drilled a big hole behind it to put the, the wiring. I popped this off, right? Popped this panel off, went in behind there, and that's what I did. And I turned it on. See, if I turn it on, it's gonna show you the temperatures and everything, right? And I can have it on auto and I can set it and it'll start up and so forth. So, see, if you, then if you hit it again, there's the fan. Right, so now it's on fan, and then there's a heat button right there. So I can turn it on heat, and then I can adjust it, how hot I want it in here. So if I go 20, 20 Celsius, that's 68 degrees. So, so that's how you do it. So if I put it on 20 Celsius, it's going to fire up. It'll fire up. And it's already got me up there already. And then a fan will just sit there and run and blow out the air. Um, you know, I can't even hear it running. But uh, here's where I put the... If I go underneath the bunk right here, it's right here. This is where I put the vent. Now you can't see it because I ain't got the light on it. See right there is where I put the vent. I just popped it in right here. I can feel the air coming out. And uh, that's what I did anyway. So I'll turn it off. And it'll run, right? What it'll do is it'll run and make sure that it all exhausts out, burns everything off. And uh, there you go. It is. It is. It's. It's the up. It's the upgraded interior. Um, yeah. See, here's here's the dash. All right there. There's the dash. And there's a nice computer deal, right? That's in there. This thing here. But. I mounted the ELD down here, and it is an automatic, but it's got that interior. And then what I did, you know, because it, it's that same interior all the way through, right? And then what I did is I put me a mount here for my TV up under cabinet mount, so I could put that all the way up. And then, you know, you got your windows, and over here, you got your antenna and plugins for your antenna and everything for your TV. But I put the satellite dish on here. Um, so with the smaller sleeper, there'd be another one of these cabinets, you know, back there, right? But that's the uh, 
and they give you all this nice room up here and all this garbage and of course international's paper towel holder right and so forth yeah they, it's got this uh navigation right here uh, dismiss the alarm ahead set but it's got the co-pilot it's got maintenance right so you can hit it and it'll tell you your maintenance levels of when you got to get stuff done if you hit alerts it'll load those items if there's any right so if you can hit maintenance it'll tell you that you know what you have done they didn't go through they did a full uh thing on us before i bought it so i got to go through here and cancel all these out and then this will tell me when something's coming up so i canceled these out i just didn't get through with all them so i got twenty one thousand remaining um to get this stuff done right so it'll tell you do it fifty thousand last service right so it'll tell you everything about the truck when you need to get stuff done when you need to get maintenance done on it um and if you hit the status button it'll load these here's the road vehicle engine electrical so these here will be when you're rolling and have the truck started it'll tell you your fuel economy crews and all that um tells you the engine stuff electrical you can go in the electrical part they'll tell you that environment and then i don't know miscellaneous engine load or whatever's on it and if you hit this button it has all this you've got a browser web browser calculator all this garbage you can download apps on it if you have a camera hooked up the camera will be hooked right into this you can hook it into this thing so you can see your camera for backing up and everything if you have that so you know it's got all that stuff and if you load up co-pilot it's got the truck professional co-pilot built into it and there it is welcome to co-pilot yeah welcome to co-pilot so it has that stuff yeah so it has the maintenance reminders um which is cool and while i'm sitting here later i will go through and i'll uh i'll do all those maintenance reminders right i'll cancel them all out so that way i know from the from the start right uh, when when you got to do that so it's really nice you know let you know when they suggest you do maintenance <clears throat> so that's what we're doing um, yeah so it's got a lot of features uh, for the money I couldn't pass it up right I mean who can pass up that deal uh, for the money it's got the nice you know the nicer seats in it uh, yeah I wish I had the bigger bunk I kind of wish I didn't have the six by two axle configuration <laughs> Because I really have, you know, we're up in the Midwest. I don't know about it, how it is in the, you know, backing into the snow and stuff. But um, uh, probably like anything else, you got to get used to how it operates and what it can and cannot do. Know your parameters on it. Then you should have no problem, right? So uh, we'll be testing that out, right? To see, you know, like, like getting in the dock here. It's uphill, raining like crazy. The pavement's wet. It started breaking traction with 38,000 pounds, you know, trying to push it up the hill. So I hit the, the load, it's got a low drive axle dump on it. I hit that because it says if you hit that, it puts more weight on it. And it, it's supposed to be like if you hit in your differential lock is what it's supposed to be like. And it worked, right? It worked. So, uh, yes, recon, heated wipers. Yes, I have those. Um, they're the same size as what was on my uh, other truck so i took them and i'm going to install them on this before winter and i have two spare um fuse panels right here in the dash i got two spare ones so i can run those run the wires and uh we'll get that done so that's what we're doing uh other than that, like I said, we installed the bunk heater. It works good. Uh, saved about 1500 bucks. 
because if, if I can do the job, I'd rather do it than have somebody else do it because it's never done right. And uh, there you go. Like I said, I got my like right down here behind the passenger seat. I have my, my pr the printer. If I didn't have to have that with me, I'd have even more room, but I got it sitting right there. I put, put that uh, freezer slash refrigerator underneath the bunk right there. Stuff is frozen solid, man. That thing actually works. Snorlord, that works, man. That's better than any of those, you know, Igloo, Coleman coolers, whatever you buy in the truck stop, right? That plug in the cigarette lighter that, what, go down, what, 20 or 30 degrees? They're 30 degrees from ambient temperature. Um, yeah, Harold, no problem, man. We'll install yours, man. Look, look, Harold. Drop your trailer at the truck stop. Bobtail on over to the house. Right? Have your heater with you. Back up to the front of the pole barn, and we'll knock the heater in there, baby. Ain't no problem, Harold. We can get her done, baby. We can get her done. Yeah. Because there's a lot of them. Here's what you gotta. Here's what you gotta. You gotta watch when you buy these. Online, you can get them as low as um. You know the the two. This is a two and a half kW. Um. Like the Wabasto is a 2KW, if you get the 2000 series or whatever, you know, basically for these trucks. Um, now, this is a V2, and it gives you the consumption, right? Uh, fuel consumption, liters an hour. This is like 0.15 up to 0.3, depending. Um, liters an hour. So, really fuel efficient. But uh, you got to watch out. Here's why you got to watch out. When you look at these online, some are only 250 bucks, some are 300, some are 400. But you got to see what they come with. Some of them don't come with all the parts to install it, right? They're missing parts for like these for these semis, right? <clears throat> if they're missing the standpipe. A standpipe can be anywhere. Well, most of them you got to buy from coming from overseas, so they're usually around forty to sixty dollars. A standpipe. Well, you have to add that in there. And then some of them don't come with a long enough hose or no fittings. You know, no vent fittings for the hoses, and then those are fifteen or twenty bucks a piece, um, and so forth. Right. So you got to watch that. So by the time you take one of those other ones that's cheaper and you add in what this one came with, you're over the price. Uh, so you got to watch out what you buy. So I looked at, you know, when I looked at it, I looked at the kit that it came with. It's all got a nice picture. That's okay. I need all that stuff. And I had extra parts left over because I didn't use everything. But it came with everything, right? Come with everything. So that way... It was easy installation. I just wish that the standpipe had the exact threads that went into the tank. That, that would have been that would have been simple. You know, it'd have been just drop. You know, take the bolt out, drop it in there, screw it down, and psh, hook up your fuel lines. And you know, installation could have been done in less than thirty minutes um, if that was the case. But yeah, because you know, if you do an installer at the sleeper. You're real close to the fuel tank, so that it doesn't take long to reach up under and hook everything up. Um, doesn't take long to drill a few holes. And the 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 biggest thing is how you run your wires into your sleeper, uh, where you want to mount the control pad, right? How do you want it to look? Do you just want to throw the wires up there and they're hanging out in the sleeper, or do you want to take panels apart, you know, off the wall, run it behind them, so that way it looks like it was installed from the factory? And that's what I did. I uh, pulled those panels out, drilled the holes in them, put that in there so it looks like it came like that from the factory. That's how I installed it, anyway. But it doesn't take you long, and I'll tell you what, to save $1,500, I don't care if it took eight hours of my time. Um, it's better than paying 1500 bucks, you know extra 
for something that does the same job. You know what I mean? Uh, it does have a warranty with it. it. Comes with a warranty. So and you can watch online. They got this company has videos, and they install it in a, like a little wooden box, right? So because they're installing it, you know, like in their little factory or whatever, showing you how easy it is to install. Uh, not hard at all. So, anyway, I got to find out how to change the screen from Celsius to Fahrenheit, but I really don't need to because I already know, you know, uh, 20 degrees Celsius, right? And then for every half a degree on Celsius is uh, a full degree in Fahrenheit, pretty close. So you can just figure it out, right? Because you're gonna set it, you're you're gonna set it to be 67, 68, or something like that in the sleeper anyway. So once you get the one one number, um, you don't have to change it. Right? Just ask Google or Siri. Right? So if you if you really want to know, you just go Siri. What's 20 degrees Celsius? That would be 68 degrees Fahrenheit. See? 20 degrees is 68. So, 20, 21 should be 70, right? Because a, a half a degree Celsius uh, is a full degree. So, we'll ask her what 21 degrees Celsius is. Siri, what's 21 degrees Celsius? 69.8 degrees Fahrenheit. So, pretty close to 70, right? Close enough. Seventy. So you know, every degree is two degrees. One degree Celsius up is two two Fahrenheit. So you know how to set it. Half would be one, right? Pretty close. So I don't even have to worry about trying to figure out how to change it to Fahrenheit because it really doesn't matter. Um, let me see what else we got going on in here. Got a bunch of emails. Make sure it's not nothing important from the from the guys. Uh, what's this message? Four hundred fifty dollars for this load. That's what they're trying to offer it for. And I don't even remember what load that is. But if it's only that kind of money, it's probably not worth even hauling. Um, so. There we go. We got some people coming in here wanting to, you know, do whatever. All right. So that's that. It's about the heater install. Got that done. New truck is okay. Uh, does the job. It's quiet. Ride's nice. Um, probably take about 10,000 miles to get the bugs out of it, right? Because it uh, hasn't been driven in a while. And that low of miles uh, to actually get everything to seed in right. You know. Because I kind of believe this truck never seen... This truck's never seen outside of a building, I don't think. I think what they done with this truck is they kept it in the factory and just had it on the dynos probably. And if they did run it on the road, it was only ran in the summertime because the frame looks brand new. And it was in Detroit for about three years, right? 2015, it's 2016 model, but I seen where that it was delivered over there at late in 2015. So, about three years. And, you know, they use a lot of salt in Michigan in that, you know, de-icer. Well, the frame has no rust on it. It looks brand new. It has no chips in it. It looks like it just came off the factory. So, um, it's never, I don't think it's ever been driven in the winter at all. And, uh, hasn't been driven very much. So, I think it's probably been driven mainly indoors, you know, on a dyno 
machine or something when they're testing their axles. That's uh, that's what I would I would guess anyway. But it's gonna get put to work now, right, fellas? Got you know, it's gonna get it's gonna do what it was made to do. I need to find some work. Yeah, Shadow Wolf. I mean, it's hard to find for something that's in the, you know, in the low 50s. Uh, basically, it's brand new, you know, 28,000 miles. And, you know, the tires are brand new. They still even have, because, uh, you know, they, they use their own uh, axle configurations and stuff they're putting on and off. So, uh, the tires look brand new. They might even have little knobby things left on them. I don't know. Uh, I, I got to put my glasses on to see that much. You know what I'm saying? I know there's a lot of tread there. I can see that. But I have to put my glasses on to be able to see if there's any of those little things sticking up out of the tire, little rubber deals, right? Yeah, it's not even broke in. Um, that's true. It's not broke in. And they're getting really good fuel mileage with it because they got to set up like the Volvo, right? It's not a, it's not a Volvo trans, it's the Eaton transmission and stuff, but when you're at 65 miles an hour, it's just like the Volvo. It's only at 1170 RPM, somewhere there, 1175 at 65. So it's, uh, getting that fuel mileage because usually if you have a regular standard at 65 you're going to be somewhere around 1450 somewhere in there depending on your gear ratios you'll be between the 14 and 1500 mark so when you reduce that 300 rpms for the same speed you increase fuel efficiency because the the engine is turning less revolutions um therefore better fuel economy because it doesn't have to work as hard to get the job done right Woo! that fell over we almost went for a ride there hit a bump at the dock hit a bump so we're still setting it up um you know, getting used to the international. The windows are smaller, of course, you know, when you're looking out them than what the Volvos are, except for the front window. Um, so there's just a little minor things that are, it's got, it came with some really dark tint on these side windows. Uh, so that was kind of nice. I even had to put the sleeper together. Okay. The screens in the windows, that's why I know it was never really outside or anything or really driven because I had, to, I had to go out, I had to get up in those cabinets was the rubber seals that go around the inside of the windows and the screen. So I had to put the screens in, I had to put the rubber seals around the windows. Um, you know, like, it, you know, when a dealer, when a dealer gets it, they unpackage everything and they install everything. Well, this stuff was never installed. It was still in all the packages in the cupboards. So I had, so when I opened them up, I'm like, wow, that's weird windows there. There's no screens and there's, you know, you can see the plastic, you know, around the windows. So when I open up the cupboards and everything, when I'm checking out to, to buy it, they're all in there in sealed packages from the factory, right? I'm like, well, I guess I got to, you know, install it myself. So, I had to do all that, which was no problem, but, uh, yeah, anyway, we're getting unloaded, so, I wonder what's the, out there to haul after this, and that's one good thing about spot market freight, you really don't have to, you know, pre-plan yourself a lot. I could just get on here and I'll find something 
that's right around here that uh, won't take long you know to book so let's see what they got um, I'll look at the one two three load board and then I'll look at the other load boards and see what we have let's do current location let's pick today's date and we'll say we'll bump the miles up to that and uh hit search oh look there's a lot of loads out of um 17 miles away down there in uh pioneer ohio uh, let's see mishawaka indiana how how far is that load well that load's only 87 miles i wonder what they're paying for 87 miles folks let's call Let's call. What do you think? 350? 400? 80 miles, what do you guys think? Hey, Kurt. Hey, man, uh, what do you got out of Holiday City today? Nothing? You got a Mishawaka, Indiana. How much that paying? Oh, you're killing me. Uh. <laughs> Pick up all day today and deliver today or tomorrow? Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh, Mishawaka, that's up there off of uh, 90, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it for that. 014328. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. All right, I'll pick it up today, and I'll, if I can get it there tonight, I'll do it. If not, first thing in the morning. All right. All right, thanks. Bye. All right. There we go. Got my load. So I'll go do that one. Because as soon as I get done here, I'm only 17 miles away. I can get that loaded and get that delivered today. And then I will find me something else I can I can pick up this afternoon. So, just like I did yesterday, right? I did a four hundred dollar load yesterday that went a uh, hundred miles, and then I had a load picked up five hundred feet. I come out of the driveway, and went down the road five hundred feet, and and pulled in, and that's this load, and this load was four fifty something for ninety miles. So basically you know 855 455 with this load so it was 855 bucks basically for um you know about 200 miles in one day because this is you know this morning so i'll do the same thing today i'll go over and pick that up because i'm about 20 minutes away and they're unloading me now so as soon as they get me done i'll roll over there and this picks up all day long and delivers all day long or next day it doesn't really matter because it, it goes to the stores right so and Harold knows what I'm talking about. So I'll run down there and load that up and uh, shoot it to the store. And since it's only an 80 mile run, I'll say, yeah, I'll be there in an hour and a half. And I'll jump up on the toll road, straight shot, right off the toll road, whoosh, whoosh, deliver it there at the store, and then I'll pick something up later this afternoon. Well, Columbia Glider Dave, you cannot negotiate on these rates out of this facility. Harold will even tell you. We haul these all the time. There's no negotiation. Um, and I'll even tell you who it is. If you haul a Menards load, there's no, there is no, yeah, it's straight across, right? There is no negotiation. 
out of that facility. They're just not. No one will negotiate with you. You might get them up 25 bucks, maybe. Maybe if they're desperate. Um, but, because see, Menards has a set rate, and it is what it is. Um, because I even, when I first got my authority, I was going to pull strictly for them. You need your own authority to pull for them, right? Um, so I was going to sign up and pull for them because you take the load, you take it to a store, you bring back an empty. They pay you one way and fuel back, right? You fuel surcharge back. So they're not going to pay anybody else any more money than what they're going to pay you with your own authority and signing on with them. Um, so the one way rate is you know more than what they pay the other guys that sign on with them uh, but they're not going to negotiate like that for an 880 mile load you can't get 800 dollars there's, there's no possible way you'll never get it never see it because they got their they got their own fleet of owner operators that will that are dedicated there that just pull them so that'll never happen um so it is what it is so, and the stores unload you in less than an hour. So, you know, if you can do an 80 mile run and let's say they pay you 400 bucks, five bucks a mile. Well, you, you can get over there and you can get loaded within 30 minutes to an hour, hour and a half, depending on where you're getting loaded, but usually an hour. And then you drive to the store, this whole run could be done in three or four hours and then get something else. Um, yeah, they don't negotiate. Right, Harold? They don't negotiate. Harold will tell you. Garrett Garb will tell you too if he's on here. Um, so, and that's what I do. I'd rather haul two short loads, right? With that head, this will be less than 100 miles. Be less than 100 miles. And uh, this guy should almost be done with me here in a couple minutes. So, I should be done with this by one. And, uh, yeah, exactly, because there's no there's no hurry for them to get this stuff to the store. There's no hurry. So I'll get this done by one. That leaves me plenty of time to pick something else up, short load, and either deliver same day or, um, you know. James G., is Menards a good deal for some owner-operators? Well, no, it's not. They, they give some bonuses two times in a year, right? during certain quarters and it's spring and just before christmas and they give you an extra 10 cents a mile if you hit certain levels uh but five five cents of that is store a store check to buy stuff in the store and the other five cents per mile for that time is will come in a bonus check um because you know, i have all the literature on it and he shows you the routes so when you add it up to go to the store and come back empty because you have to come back empty, you know, bring their trailer back, and then grab another one. Comes out to about a dollar thirty-five to a dollar forty a mile, somewhere in there. I can't get the exact number, but it wasn't over a dollar forty. It was right in that a dollar thirty-five, dollar forty. Certain routes, different fuel surcharges at the time. But that's what it is. Um, so yes, is it a good deal over? Well, yeah, you could say you could say it's kind of a good deal over working for a mega carrier because you never have to worry about parking, you never have to worry about truck stops because if you're a Menards truck, you could sleep at all the Menards stores if you really had to. But they're short runs, so you can all you're always sleeping at a distribution center, and most of the guys that do that will park their tractor. They'll leave their their own tractor not at their house. They'll leave it at the distribution center and drive a car back and forth right because a lot of them will be home every night um it's and then they'll pay a little more on the weekend i think it's 50 bucks more a load or something like that on the weekend if you haul the weekend freight um but yeah you know you it's like a dedicated thing so you know what you're hauling right you're going to be hauling back and forth and the stores are easy to get to so you never have to worry about going into some crappy town you know uh that has you know cities and stuff that you know has 
docks were made back in the 40s and 50s. Uh, so in that aspect, yeah, because on any Google map, it, the Menards are there, you know. And there's no time limit. See, that's another good thing. There's no time. You got up until 10 o'clock at night to deliver to most of those stores. And if you don't, you just deliver the next day. So when you the way it works, when you leave the gate, you just tell them, they say, when do you think you'll be there? Well, if you know you got to take a 10 hour break, you just tell them, I'll be there tomorrow at 830. And it just gives them an idea when the truck is coming at the store. There's no appointments. So like if I get over there, let's say at 10 o'clock and I get loaded, uh, let's say at uh, 11 or 11.30. Let's say I probably get 11.30. I'll say, okay, I'll be at the store at 1 o'clock. Because I know it's a straight shot. So when I pull up in there, they know I'm they know I'm coming. So I pull in there. And the dock's free. You get right on in and you walk around the store while they unload your truck. Do some shopping or whatever. And, uh, you know, sign your bills and you roll out. In all actuality... I could deadhead back the 80 miles and grab me another one. Just load it, you know, because they load up until 8 or 9 or 10 at night. Door 7, right? It's always door 7. That's right, James. It's always door 7. So if I don't see something over there I like, I can just run back to Menards and grab me another one. And then roll, you know, roll up into Michigan or over to Ohio. It's all short run. Uh, so if I did two of those... Depending on where it goes, I mean, you know, they, they range from $400 up to about 900 depending on where they go. So, you know, today, it could be another $800,000 a day for hardly no miles. So, that's, a, you know, that's the last case scenario because going over there to the, to the Mishawaka area, um, you know, yeah, Alvin, they do a good job on loading fat beds too. Yeah. My luck is usually when I get there, I usually get loaded with, with wood. I usually don't get the concrete blocks. The concrete blocks are faster than the wood. And the wood, you know, it it hits the side of your trailer a lot because, you know, they're putting that eight foot board in there, which is really not eight foot. It's a little, you know, so a lot of times they're a little wider than that. Um, but they'll load you up with that. And, and, uh, they don't, you know, they say, oh, that's not on a flatbed. See, that's what they get when you do the, oh, it's not on a flatbed. So they got to unload you at the dock. And what they do is they open up the other dock door. So they pull it out of your truck, set it there. And another forklift's outside that picks it up and takes it, you know, because it's pressure, pressure treated wood. And they take it over because all that's you know, stored outside. So, well, yeah, the stores usually don't take, you know, if you can get right into the dock, you're looking at 30 minutes to an hour tops. If you got to wait for somebody... You know, you might be there an hour and a half or two hours, but usually uh, 90% of the time, it's an hour or less. Well, that's why I don't go to those, Barry. If you run out of Plano, Illinois, I guess you don't have no choice, right? I guess you don't have no choice, but uh, I try not to go to those. I'm, I just do the ones out of uh, Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana. Um that you know that's what i do so i put 60 gallons in this truck when i when i went and got my trailer so i ran the load down there ran this load over here i'm going to run this other load and i'm still going to be just under a half a tank um so doing all that i won't even use a quarter of a tank because it was just under three quarters when I started this uh, process so that's not bad anyway that's what's going on my jaw started to hurt because of the stitches and everything so I'm gonna get off this uh, live feed everybody have a good one be safe um, right and we'll see y'all later next time and we'll have some better we'll do some more videos get some better footage out there we'll talk about whatever we want to talk about in the trucking industry james g you have a good you have a good day man james g knocking it out hit hitting it out of the park you know when he went to texas i was like what is james doing man 
and then he you know gets a short load out of texas and he you know he's working his way back but um i was like man what what are you doing but hey you want to stretch your legs a little bit see some different scenery you know more power right more power to you should have went down there to harold harold land he'd have bought you a chicken dinner right right here if you pass by james's house look if you pass by james's house you get good things man you go to james's house man you get to get in the massage chair you get a stogie you get a pbr uh and you get to swim in the pool right so man how good can that be how good can that be he close gives me a message incoming rate con all right, brother. No problem. We'll take care of you, buddy. All right, let's see what we got. Incoming rate con. Oh, yep, yeah, there it is. Let's see. Well, that's not bad, Heath. That ain't bad. We'll send it to you. All right. We will uh, save this to files. And then we will send it in case he doesn't have it. He should have it, but we will make sure he's got it. And I think we're done. So we'll see you all later because I heard the dock plate. Um, We'll see y'all later. See ya.